And we welcome you back in to West Banco Arena in Wheeling, West Virginia. Greg White, E.J. Shotzinski getting ready for the 8-9 matchup in the men's bracket. And number eight, Notre Dame. Number nine, Wheeling. Notre Dame comes in with a record of 14 and 13, 8 and 12. And the Mountain East for the Wheeling Cardinals, 10 and 17 overall, 6 and 14 in the conference. It has been um, an interesting day of basketball, EJ. We started out with two really, really good women's game. We started off the tournament as number 10 Notre Dame upset defending national champs and number seven Glenville State 82 to 78 in overtime. And then in the second game at 2.30, the nine seed West Virginia Wesleyan got by number eight West Liberty 77-64. First men's game of the night, Glenville State. Uh, just too much for Frostburg State to handle. You had that game, and uh, my gosh, Glenville just came out on fire. Yeah, they really did, and they were, you know, they were led by. Uh, 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 I'm slipping my name right now. What's his, what's his name? Uh, Turbo. Turbo. They yeah. were led by Turbo. What a player, and he was really the catalyst for yeah. them. And uh, Frostburg just had a hard time scoring the basketball. Big win, and we got what I think is a really good game, the 8-9 matchup. Traditionally speaking in tournament play, the 8-9 is kind of like the 5-12 in the NCAA tournament. You know, you've got two teams, and you look at their overall record, and you're like, "Eh, you know, we're going to see how this goes. But then you start looking back over the games that they have played, and uh, my goodness, I think this is going to be a really, really good game. For Wheeling, you've got a player named Marcus Johnson. He's a 6'7 junior. He's in the top 20 in the United States, points per game at 21 and a half, and in the top 20 in the United States for free throw percentage at 90%. And you know that's going to be the catalyst to getting this Wheeling offense going. Yeah, he's a great player, and Chris Richardson, the Wheeling coach, does a really nice job for the Cardinals, and, of course, they're – they didn't have to travel that far to get here, so I would expect them to have their legs. I think so. And, you know, you go back and you kind of look at uh, the Notre Dame schedule. They did beat Wheeling twice this year back in the beginning of the season, 79-66. to 66, And then they got a win in late January, 80-71. to 71. So the teams are out. Uh, uh, Notre Dame was out earlier. They were warming up. They're back in the locker room getting final instructions from head coach Chris, Chris Richardson right now, or from head coach, rather, Mark Richmond, Chris Richardson, and the Wheeling team out here right now going through the lineup. So we will uh, take a break, come back, and talk more about this game. It's the 8-9 matchup in the men's bracket, number eight, Notre Dame, at number nine, Wheeling, the 2024 Mountain East Conference Basketball Championships, presented by the Health Plan from Metro News and Mountain East Digital Network and love with helping you get your next car, truck, or SUV. I love saying yes to $2 down. I love saying yes to $200 monthly payments. I love saying yes to up to $2,000 more for your trade. And I love saying yes to your approved with my Key Says Yes credit approval process. All of this plus a lifetime warranty only at Yes Chevrolet in Hurricane. What if your bank offered new checking and savings accounts with a very low balance required, online bill pay and debit cards issued right away? I would like that. What if that bank had extended hours every business day and were open on Saturdays? That's incredible. And if all their accounts had low fees or no fees? That's money in the bank, the right bank. Open your checking and savings account at Main Street Bank. You deserve a bank this good. Back now as the two teams are warming up, it is the 2024 Mountain East Conference men's bracket, what are commonly referred to as play-in games, but it's actually the first round of the tournament. 
We had the 7-10 matchup earlier with Glenville getting the win over 10 seed Frostburg State. And now we've got the eight seed Notre Dame, the nine seed Wheeling. And a comparison of the two team as far as statistics, almost as even as you can get. Notre Dame scores 83 points a game. They give up 82 points a game for Wheeling. They score 82, they give up 86. Rebounding, about the same. 39 for Notre Dame, 37 for Wheeling. The number that kind of stands out to me, on the road, away from Notre Dame, the Falcons are nine and six. On the road, away from Wheeling, and technically this is Wheeling, but this is not their home venue. The Cardinals are four and 11. That tells me, just looking at the record, that they do struggle a little bit when they're away from their friendly confines. Yeah, and they, they have some close losses in there as well. I would say, you know, looking on at the teams warming up, I'd say it's a 50-50 game. Yeah. You know, let's see which team executes the best and gets off to a good hot start and, you know, plays the best basketball. You know, and it it always in a situation like this, and, of course, you, you coached for years, it comes down, I think, to fundamentals. You know, who can do the basics better? Who can hold on to the basketball, keep possession, and get good shots? Um, and, you know, a lot of times it comes down to turning defense into offense. Who's going to force those turnovers and then turn those into points? And I think it comes down to fundamentals for both these teams tonight. Yeah, and you, you've spoken like a true coach. You know, really the team, <laughs> the team that makes the uh, easy plays and makes one another better, they're going to be the team that has the most fun and ultimately comes out on top. You know, and we talked about this earlier as well. It is the Mountain East Conference Tournament. Both the teams on the court right now and their coaches know you win, you keep playing. You'll be back on Friday to play a few more games, maybe uh, at least one more. If you do not win tonight, that's kind of a different ball game. <clears throat> Survive and advance. <laughs> Survive and advance is exactly right. Uh, so it is the 2024 Mountain East Conference Championships. Time now to bring you the starting lineups brought to you by McKinley Architecture and Engineering. Experience, innovation, delivered. The eighth seed is Notre Dame under head coach Mark Richmond with a record of 14 and 13. They will go with Bolahan Audio. The junior guard, 6'4", 190 pounds, out of Cleveland, Ohio, 10 points, three rebounds a game. Andre Harris, a redshirt junior, 6'4", 200 pound guard out of Lindhurst, Ohio, 12.7 rebounds a game. The three guard, Devin Hayde, a 6'5", 186 pound redshirt sophomore out of Worcester, or, is it Worcester or Worcester? Okay, we'll go with Worcester, thank you very much. 16 points a game and six rebounds. The forward is R.J. Ogum, a 5'11", 220-pound redshirt junior out of Chicago, Illinois, and Trent Williams, a 6'4", 185-pound senior out of, he uh, played his last basketball at Tiffin University. So again, it'll be Audio Harris, Hayde, Ogum, and Williams. For the Wheeling Cardinals under head coach Chris Richardson, Sean Ely, the 5'11 junior guard out of Cincinnati, Ohio, 14 points, three rebounds a game. Uh, the other guard, Alex Smith, a 6'3 red shirt freshman out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, three points, four rebounds a game. T. Harris, a 6'7 freshman forward out of Mineral, Virginia, seven points and four rebounds a game. 6'4 sophomore S.J. Hutchinson out of Philadelphia, 10 points and three rebounds a game. And we mentioned Marcus Johnson a minute ago. Stellar player, 21 and a half points, eight rebounds a game. He's a 6'7 junior out of Akron, Ohio. So uh, pretty good crowd on hand, of course, Wheeling University. And we are playing in Wheeling and Notre Dame, not really that far from here. They are just outside of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, so good crowd on hand for a late night ball game. But you know what? We're going to have a good time with it either way. That's for sure. Should be an exciting game, Greg. Starting lineups are being introduced again. A beautiful venue here. We'll step away while they do the starting lineups. We'll be back to the 2024 Mountain East Conference Championships. Choosing health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company 
is one of the most important decisions you can make. The Health Plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The Health Plan, here for you. Ready to go for tip-off, the 8-9 matchup in the men's bracket. Wheeling and Notre Dame. Wheeling in the black uniforms with the red numerals trimmed in white Notre Dame. The gold uniforms with the white numerals trimmed in blue. R.J. Ogham for Notre Dame jumping center against T. Harris. Crowd is ready, players are ready, officials are ready. I assume broadcasters are ready, we good? We're good to go. All right, here we go. There's the opening tip controlled by Notre Dame. They'll work it into the front court. Audio, the point guard, works with it and sets up over on the left side. Looking, looking. They're going to work it inside as best they can. Here's a cross-court pass with the head fake and the drive. Shot is up, and a foul is called, so just underway. And Ogham is fouled, foul is gonna be called on S.J. Hutchinson. That's his first. Ogham really looks like a handful down there. He's got a variety of moves. Indeed he does, 5'11", 220 pounds. He's at the free throw line, an 84% free throw shooter. First one up, bounces around and falls off. So we are scoreless, just underway. And I've, I've seen guys be undersized in the programs. He's definitely not five foot eleven. No, I he, don't. He's about six foot four. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm kind of looking at it. And I'm like, I don't think that's right. Maybe it's six eleven and it's a typo. <laughs> it's highly likely that both free throws miss. So Wheeling now with the basketball. They drive in and it is a turnover. And we kind of talked about that going in. It's the team that can maintain possession of the basketball and get good looks. Yeah, you got to execute every time down, and that time willing, you know, as we saw, did not. Marcus Johnson, we talked about him a little bit in the uh, lead in the nation. There's the runner by Sean Ely, but Marcus Johnson points per game. Marcus Johnson points per game and free throw percentage, top 20 in the nation. They got him listed at about six foot seven. They do not list weights, but he looks like a tight end from the NFL. <laughs> He's got the basketball now, elbow left. Hands the ball off to Alex Smith. Nice drive to the basket and lays it in. Just saw that lane and kind of saw it open up and right down the lane he went. Yeah, and I think Johnson paved the way with a nice off the ball screen. I would not want to go up in a screen against Mr. Johnson. On the right side, how about a three for Notre Dame? It comes off the side of the iron and the rebound. Pulled down by Wheeling. Quickly, they like to set up their offense. Here's a three right wing, back of the iron, no good. Rebound tapped out. It stays with Wheeling. Nice ball movement there by Sean Ely as the ball tipped out by Marcus Johnson. He'll push it over to the right side. They just work it around the perimeter. Now they're going to drive to the lane. Shot is up. Shot is good. And the foul is going to be called on R.J. Ogham. That's his first, team's first. Yeah, this is, this is the fourth game here today, and I really don't sense the nervousness in this game that I saw in the previous ones. These guys are playing loose on both sides. They are relaxed, and they want to stay in it. Free throw is up and good. Five to two, Wheeling 
in the lead. They are the nine seed. Already saw a nine seed win today in the women's bracket. Notre Dame setting that offense. Johnson comes way out high. And they've got the matchups that they like player on player. Ball is tipped out of bounds. It goes off of the hands of Trent Williams for Notre Dame. It's another turnover. And Wheeling takes possession with the lead. Officials are ready. Oh. I thought I heard somebody yell sub. I think the official did too because he was looking and nobody was getting up off the bench. So Wheeling into the front court, very deliberate in their offense. Alex Smith has it, works it down to Johnson. Johnson backing in, backing in, reverse layup. Oh, my. Oh, my is, is right. I mean, it was a physical play, and then he made like a really finesse left-hand layup reverse. It was really impressive. Well, what I think that I saw in that, I think the defense for Notre Dame saw it, is he kept looking outside like he was going to pass it away, and there's another turnover by Notre Dame. Can't keep possession. Alex Smith has it, right wing. They just play catch with it, and then they slow it down. But Johnson was backing in on the previous play, but he kept looking out, and I think they were afraid he was going to pass the ball outside, and then the reverse layup. Johnson has it out high. Now he's working against Ogham. Drives in, brings it over to the left side. Here is a three on the way for Ely. No good, but the rebound back up and in by T. Harris. Right place, right time. Now on the other side, shot is up. No good for Devin Hayde, the red shirt sophomore, and he'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, Notre Dame really needed that right there. They were sort of on the ropes. Johnson uh, dominating at the offensive end for Wheeling. Nine to two cards. Very powerful underneath, and Hayde drove in. And, uh, I, you know, it's one of those situations where you kind of wonder what they're going to call because the shoulder went down, but he didn't, I guess, get it down low enough. And the free throw is up and good for Devin Hayde, an 84% free throw shooter on the season. That's his first point of the night. And I think that's what Chris Richardson's talking to the official over there right now. Uh-huh. There's, there's a lot of subjective calls in officiating. You know, it could go, <laughs> you see it one way and, and I see it another. Sort of like uh, Wooster and Wooster. You, that's you know, exactly tomato, right. Tomato, tomato. Javante Jones checks into the basketball game for Notre Dame. 6'5", 190-pound redshirt sophomore out of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Wheeling comes into the front court. They set up the offense, work around that screen by big Marcus Johnson. They come on the left side to Alex Smith as they keep working it around. And a little bit out of control there. There's going to be a scrum for the basketball. They pass it away. Shot is up. Shot is good for T. Harris. And he will go to the free throw line. Foul called on Bol Bolhan Audio. Boy, a scrum is right. You can see on the video, how many times did the ball change possessions right there? Finally, Wheeling comes up with it and uh, gets the end one opportunity. And right now, Wheeling dominating here early on. Seven point lead, looking for more. Shot is up and good. It's an eight point lead for the Cardinals of Wheeling. They are the nine seed in the men's bracket. Now Notre Dame looking for some offense, have not found much yet, only four points on the night, two of those coming at the free throw line. Now driving in, lost control of the ball, but managed to corral it, and Devin Hayde lays it in. Cuts the lead in half. Yeah, and Johnson's gonna have a hard time staying with Dade out there on the perimeter. Blew right past him that time. Now the big guy is gonna fire up a three. It comes off the side of the rim, the rebound pulled down by Notre Dame. They are in transition. Hayde quickly with the bounce pass behind him to Andre Harris. He drives down the lane and lays it in. And you know, the interesting thing about that is Johnson was way out high and he just went right behind him. Yeah, he really did. And as a defender, you never want to let the ball get into the middle like that. And um, Notre Dame makes him pay. Now on the other side, another reverse layup is good for Sean Ely, the 5'11 junior, making it look easy. And keeps that lead at six. Javante Jones works with it. Gets it to Audio. 
Audio circles around, picked up by Johnson. They get it to Hade. Hade wants to go inside, working against Alex Smith, and he does, spins, turns. Nice shot. 14-8, 14-10 rather. As Wheeling has a four-point lead. They have led by as many as eight here in the first quarter, or the first half rather. Now there's a three from the top of the key. My goodness, Alex Smith, a 70% free throw shooter from the three-point arc, just 21%, but man, he switched that one in easy. Yeah, both teams really playing in a high level on offense here. Let's see which team can get a stop. Now bounce pass underneath. They wanted the three, it's not there. Jones has his shot blocked by T. Harris. Rebound pulled down by Wheeling. They float it underneath to Harris. Harris lost the handle on the basketball. It's tipped away, goes right to Notre Dame. Lead pass out ahead. Here's the float and the two-hand slam dunk. Nice feed to Javante Jones. Floated it up. He caught it midair and slammed it home. Yeah, that looked easy, but it was not. The pass was a little bit low. He went down and got it and then brought it back up. Wheeling has it, working it into Marcus Jones. Overplayed the attempted steal, couldn't get it to fall. Rebound out to Smith, falling away. Nice shot from about six feet away, and he swishes it in. And Johnson for Wheeling, he takes up so much space inside, it really opens up lanes for the other players. Now here's Notre Dame working with the basketball. Crossover, stop and pop from about 13 feet away. It will not go, and we're coming the other way. Wheeling with another rebound. Right now, rebounding in favor of Wheeling. Another three on the way up, and good for Sean Ely. And that leads us to a timeout, a 10-point advantage for Wheeling, taking advantage of it as they go. We'll step away for just a moment. It's the 2024 Mountain East Conference Basketball Championships presented by the Health Plan from Metro News and the Mountain East Digital Network. It's Pal, and I'm in love with helping you get your next car, truck, or SUV. I love saying yes to only $2 down. I love saying yes to $200 monthly payments. I love saying yes to up to $2,000 more for your trade. And I love saying yes to your approved with my Key Says Yes credit approval process. All of this plus a lifetime warranty only at Yes Ford in Huntington. What if your bank offered new checking and savings accounts with a very low balance required, online bill pay and debit cards issued right away? I would like that. What if that bank had extended hours every business day and were open on Saturdays? That's incredible. And if all their accounts had low fees or no fees. That's money in the bank, the right bank. Open your checking and savings account at Main Street Bank. You deserve a bank this good. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Regional State Farm Insurance agents are proud to support the 2024 Mountain East Conference Tournament. Call one of the MEC sponsoring agents today, Rick Bailey in Fairmont, Lisa Shepard in New Martinsville, Taylor Shepard in Moundsville, Jan Kiesling in Buchanan, and Lori Grissel in Wheeling. So the Cardinals of Wheeling on an 8-2 run right now. Notre Dame needs some points and they need them now. They have it. Driving in, floating it around, quick movement to the basket, cut off, laying it up over the lip of the rim is Andre Harris. Nice move inside, adjusted his body, good body control, and he laid it in. It really was. You can see Andre has a ton of athleticism. Now they floated in, tried to float it in to Marcus Johnson. Notre Dame anticipated it, had a couple of guys bracketing him. They kick it out on the right side, looking for a three. It's not there. There's the spin move from Hayde. 
No good. Rebound saved inbounds, but Notre Dame saved it in to Whelan. Sean Ely floats it underneath. Hard layup by Kevin Coleman, Jr., just into the ball game for Wheeling. So both teams using a little substitution, giving some of their guys a rest because this will be an up and down game. 10 point lead for Wheeling. Spin move in the lane. They bring it out. Here is a three on the way. Comes off the side of the iron by Javante Jones and out of bounds. So right now, I think the, the struggle for Notre Dame, they're shooting six out of 11 from the floor, but they're 0 of two from three point range. So looking for that spark, somebody to get them going offensively. Yeah, and they really need to, you know, do a little better offensively, but they really need to start getting some stops on defense. Wheeling really doing whatever they want. On the right side working with it is Marcus Johnson, the big guy out high, and he's going to spot up, fire it from the corner. In and out, though. Tough luck miss. Notre Dame with the rebound. Into the front court they come, driving down. Euro step in the lane. That's Andre Harris for two. Wow, really strong because he was bumped along the way. He just kept going. Pinballed, as they say. On the left side, here's Ely. Drives into the foul line. Wants to float it inside to Johnson. No, check me, not Johnson, but Kevin Coleman Jr. And it danced and touched almost every part of that rim except the net. Notre Dame. Looking for points, here we go. Shot is up, no good. Rebound again to the Cardinals. Wheeling into the front court. Johnson brings it up himself, the big guy. Comes to the top of the key to Coleman as they work it around. Here's a long three up and in for Sean Ely. My goodness, what a shot. Yeah, that was from 25. He is two out of three from three-point range. Right now, Wheeling has got some good offensive rhythm on the other side. Oh, pretty move up and in for Devin Hayde. And he is going to be fouled by Kevin Coleman, Jr. He came in, got the nice spin move, went up around Johnson, and then went up and over for the basket. 9.58 to go here in the opening half. Got a timeout on the court. We will step away. This is the 2024 Mountain East Conference Basketball Champions. Championships from Metro News and the Mountain East Digital Network. West Virginia's largest restoration company is now in the heart of the Mountain State. With a location in Charleston, joining our branches in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, we'll be there to help when you need it most. Our expert team and state-of-the-art equipment is ready to serve the Kanawha Valley 24 hours a day. From water damage to fire restoration, when disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Mountaineers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. West Banco Arena, a beautiful venue, and we love coming up here for the Mountain East Basketball Conference, wheeling with that nine-point lead and trying to cut it down to eight. Hayde steps to the line, an 84% free throw shooter on the season from the line. Two out of two, make it three out of three. We saw the importance of free throws in our, first, or our second game today, the women's game as free throws helped 
the Notre Dame women's team. They also helped West Virginia Wesleyan. Now there is the floater, another that didn't go. The rebound comes down to Notre Dame, looking to set the offense. They've got it down to eight points. Trying to get a little bit closer. Backing in, backing in is Ogham, and he will float it up side of the iron. Can't get it to fall. Again, the struggles continue for Notre Dame, 53% from the floor, Wheeling, 61%. Speaking of wheeling, here they come on the drive. It bounces off the back of the iron and right through the net. Nice move as they drive in. Yeah, that was Tigney, and, uh, and he used his left hand there and got a nice bounce. Working with it on the left side is Hayde. Hayde has been kind of the spark driving in, and now a foul. And the reach around, basically what you had there was the the defender reaching around and just trying to knock the ball loose, and he knocked the ball up into the face of uh, Ogham, and they called the foul. Yeah, yeah, much to the dismay of wheeling coach Chris Richardson, who was, uh, was right in front of him. Did not seem real happy, but when is a coach ever happy with a call against his team? No, and I'll tell you, when that, <laughs> when that whistle blows, there's no taking it back. I mean, I've never seen that happen ever. Nope. I saw an inadvertent whistle one time, but other than that, that was in football. So the ball knocked out of bounds as Notre Dame retains possession. Notre Dame, the eight seed, wheeling the nine seed here. The winner of this one, their prize for winning, in addition to being happy about winning a game, is they get to face the overall one seed in the men's bracket, the University of Charleston. Here is a quick catch and shot by Devin Hayde, and he knocks another one down. Devin Hayde with 11 points to lead all scorers. Yeah, Devin's been really impressive, and uh, I don't think these guys care one way or the other if they're playing Charleston next. It's just a chance to play another game of basketball. Whoever's next ball almost stolen away. And now they stay down. Here is the spin shot up. No as Jerry Saunders Jr. fouled on his way to the basket. He'll get two shots. Devin Hayde called for the foul. Jerry Saunders Jr., the sophomore out of Pickerington, Ohio, had 17 points in the last game against West Liberty, an 81% free throw shooter, knocks the first one down. Pretty impressive when you look down the statistical information as far as free throw shooting, we talked earlier today about just how important uh, it is for those fundamentals, you know, making the layups, making the free throws. And when you get a team that can shoot free throws very well, they're never out of a game. No, no. And, and conversely, if you're not a good free throw, free throw shooting team, it really drives you crazy as a coach, you know. How many, how many years do, have we seen, like, Let's say the Mountaineers and right. their primes go to the line and just lay brick after brick after brick. Oh. Uh, but it really helps you if you can if you can shoot a high percentage. We've seen it all afternoon, and uh, it's been really impressive so far. Long three up and in for Joshua Dames, the junior out of the Bahamas, knocking it down. That's what Notre Dame needs is a spark driving in, got a tie up. Well, I thought it was a tie-up. It's not. It's a foul. I think he got some ball, but he also got a lot of arm on that one, and uh, Wheeling's going to go to the free-throw line. So Wheeling at the line. Jerry Saunders, Jr., again, steps up for the free-throws. Saunders, two out of two, perfect from the line tonight. First one up, good. I always get nervous because I want to share the information, but the broadcaster's jinx comes into your mind. Yeah, and there you're you like, go, yeah. I don't want to say he's perfect and then he misses one because then I feel like it's my fault. Yeah. Because yeah. we have that kind of power. We do. And, <laughs> you know, how many times did we say, though, in the earlier game that, right. you, know, that, you know, that they haven't missed a free throw all day and they continue to knock him down? Oh, yeah. West Virginia Wesleyan hit a bunch of free throws in their win earlier today in the women's bracket. So Notre Dame continues to try to close this gap up. Here is a three, top of the key, comes off the back of the iron, 
No good, rebound out high, controlled by Notre Dame. Hayde fires it up from three, falling forward, leaning into it and knocking it down from long distance. A leaner from three. I know. <laughs> Nothing but net. And the lead is cut down to six. First time it's been that close in a while. Now on the other side, Marcus Johnson stops and pops from 16. That, that barely moved the net. Yeah, and Marcus is able to create space with that big body. Brushed off the defender, got his space, and knocked it down. Now on the other side, Hay drives in off the front of the iron. Cannot get it to go very frustrated that it didn't drop because he wanted the three. So the shot is up, but you look at Marcus Johnson, and you look at this body, and you think he's just going to be a low post guy. Mm -mm. We've seen him firing up threes. That's a 16-footer. Marcus Johnson scoring for the Wheeling Cardinals. He's got six points here tonight. Hay knocks down the first free throw for Notre Dame. He'll get another one. And Johnson Johnson has admirers from all over, the, all over West Virginia. I just received a text from... Uh, West Virginia State assistant AD, Sean McAndrews, and he says, watch number 25. He can do it all. So thanks for the scouting report, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Hey, thanks for listening. Sean, one of the good people in the world. So here we go as Wheeling has the basketball. Notre Dame has kind of chipped away the lead. It was as many as 12. Now on the other side, Wheeling trying to find some offense. Notre Dame watching. Working around the screen, here is the shot up and good. It is a three-pointer for Sean Ely, knocking down another one. He is three out of four from behind the arc. Now here's the answer attempt from Notre Dame, and Joshua Dames puts another one in. Dames, two of two from three-point range. My goodness. Raining threes here in Wheeling. On the right side, another three on the way from Wheeling. That's William Gabbert. Played his high school ball at Greenbrier East. And he knocks down the three. Now on the other side, driving it around, driving to the basket. Ball swatted away by Marcus Johnson. The attempt to save it inbounds by Geo Moore is not successful. And Wheeling will keep the ball as Marcus Johnson comes in, knocks the ball. Not only does he block the shot, but then he pulls it down, throws it off the shoulder of Moore, which results in the turnover. He really did, and he only jumps about three inches off the floor. It's all timing. <laughs> it's all timing and uh, anticipation, and Johnson did a great job. Wheeling trying to extend this lead back to double digits, driving the baseline. Shot is up. Shot is rejected. S.J. Hutchinson on the shot, has it blocked. Now on the other side, shot is up. It is good for Andre Harris, and he will go to the free throw line to try to get three the old-fashioned way. Took yeah. it coast to coast. Yeah, you can see right here he beats Gabbard to the middle. That's a no-no. Draws the foul and completes the basket. Puts it right up and in, and you know, we talk about this, you know, it's commonly referred to as the Euro step. Now, I think I'm a little bit older than you, but when I was playing, that extra step was gonna get a travel every time, and it's just sort of evolved over the last few years. In high school, yeah, the Euro step will get you a travel, but collegiate and NBA level, well, NBA, you can take like nine steps and you're okay. <laughs> yeah. Here's Hayde. Passing it over on the left wing. It is up. It is good for Joshua Dames. He just knocks down his third three-pointer. And all of a sudden, it's a four-point ball game. Trying to go cross court. Here is a three from the corner. No good for William Gabbert. Rebound to Notre Dame. They're in transition. Quickly, shot up. Shot is good for Javante Jones. And Notre Dame has fought their way back from being down double digits to make it a two-point game. Wheeling looking for some offense. Gabbert wants some motion. Now he hands the ball off to Saunders. Saunders lowers his shoulder, has the ball swatted away. And what do we have, a foul? I think so. Yeah. We do indeed. All right, that'll take us to another media timeout. 
It is the Mountain East Conference Championships 2024 edition. Brought to you by the Health Plan from Metro News and the Mountain East Digital Network. Choosing health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The Health Plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The Health Plan, here for you. At Glimple State University, you can discover friends to last a lifetime, professors who broaden your perspective, and the skills and education for future success in a small town environment. At Glimple State University, you can become a pioneer. What's possible when you have the freedom to explore things that inspire you? To be a part of a community that supports and challenges you. Where can you go to find the space and time to reach your goals? Who can you become when you're able to make connections in a place where you belong? Find out what's possible at Frostburg State University. Back to action at the free throw line for Wheeling, Jerry Saunders Jr. He's four out of four from there tonight. It was a double digit lead for Wheeling and then Notre Dame kind of got a little offensive motivation, I guess, hit a couple of big shots, got a couple of blocks and rebounds and now it's a two point game. Yeah, this one's gonna be a game of runs and you can see the teams are pretty well matched and they both have athletes and scorers and uh, Notre Dame on the momentum right now. It's an 8-3 to three run for Notre Dame right now. We had an 8-2 to two run earlier for Wheeling. As Saunders misses the first one, he's got another one coming. Made that one. Three-point game. Alex Smith checks back in for Wheeling. Saunders will go to the bench. Alex Smith, the redshirt freshman. And Notre Dame can tie it up with a three. They've slowed down a little bit. They've become a little more deliberate in their offensive set. They were transition basketball early on. And now the ball swatted away in the middle. Got a little trouble for Andre Harris. He has to back out of there. He was triple teamed. Now here's a three right wing. It comes off the front of the iron and pulled down by Wheeling University, the Cardinals. Up high, work it to Johnson. He's just going to step back, push up a three, and missed it. Rebound to Notre Dame. Hayde in transition. In the corner, head fake, driving in. Oh, my, what a block on the other end, and they called the foul, but my goodness, great recovery by Wheeling as T. Harris rotated back over there. Got the block, but official said he got him with the body. Yeah, I think that's exactly what happened, and uh, I was, I was, I was looking for the replay. We don't have one on this one, but I think that's what we would have saw. A clean block up top, but he knocked him and uh, knocked him down below. Free throw is up and good for Andre Harris, a 58% free throw shooter, and he gets the first one. Been an exciting first half, as you said earlier. A game of runs, an 8-2 run by Wheeling early, an 8-3 run by Notre Dame moments ago. Now. They're trading blows, and we've got a lane violation. The free throw was good, but the official said Joshua Dames lost his balance a little bit, and he didn't step into the lane, but what he did is he bumped into Johnson and, yeah, kind of helped him step into the lane, so they negate the point. Left wing three up. Good for T. Harris, Jr. of Wheeling. Nice shots outside. Gets the wheeling bench up on their feet. Now here's a drive, kick it in the corner. Three for Notre Dame. It comes off the front of the iron. Rebound scrapped four players everywhere and controlled by wheeling and then a steal. 
Lead pass, out ahead, here it comes. Rams at home. Andre Harris with the two-hand flush. And it cuts it to that three-point lead for Wheeling. Notre Dame can get close. They haven't been able to get over that hump yet, though. Boy, wouldn't it be nice to jump that high just once? I used to get a little bit up there, but not so much. Now on the <laughs> other side, Wheeling turns it over. Drive to the lane. It is no good, but a foul is called. Andre Harris took it right down the lane. And it, it's one of those situations there. He's going high speed driving it down after the tip, and there's the feed on the two-hand slam dunk. Just blasted it home. <laughs> and then the turnover again, he drives down. And it's one of those situations where you're like, all right, I hope this goes in, but worst case scenario, I'm gonna get fouled, which is exactly what happened. Comes down, just drives down the lane, puts it up, and yeah, couldn't get it to go. Free throw, up good. Andre Harris. Yet another point, he is two out of three from the free throw line. He's got 14 points. Devin Hayde for Notre Dame leads all scorers with 16. Harris ready again, the red shirt junior. Three, drib three dribbles and a backspin, puts it up and off the back of the iron, too strong that time, it won't fall. Wheeling jogging into the front court now. They've cooled down a little bit from the floor. They're still hitting big shots, but early on it was one after another after another. There, here's Johnson, hard pass over in the deep right corner. May have been partially deflected. It comes off the side of the iron, no good. Pass out ahead, driving down the lane. Shot is up, no good for Andre Harris. Rebound to Wheeling. They will reset it. And spot up, leave him wide open. He is going to make you pay. That's Alex Smith, the red shirt freshman. I mean, he had all day to think about that one. Yeah, he really did. You know, every time Notre Dame gets close, Wheeling extends it. Right now they're up at five. Falcons with the basketball working on the left side. Now they come down low. Backing in, backing in. Shot is up, it is good, and a foul. R.J. Ogham kept backing in, backing in. Wheeling not happy about the foul call because he knocked Alex Smith to the ground, but no call because they said, I guess Alex Smith was still moving. And just for lack of a better way to say it, kind of incidental contact to make him fall. Yeah, it's a tough one there for Wheeling. So Ogham puts up the free throw, can't get it. And going up and basically plucking the ball off of the rim. That goes back to what you were saying about wishing we could jump that high anymore. <laughs> I can see the rim. That's about it. Now here's Johnson working against Ogham out high. They drive down the lane. Floater up with the left hand. Will not go. And a rebound foul is called. And on the other side, you see that and that's kind of what we were talking about. He was backing in, backing in, and just kind of bumped into him trying to get position. Smith goes hard to the floor. And on the other end, a foul is called. Marcus Johnson will go to the free throw line. Johnson, again, we talked about that in the top 20 in the nation in free throw shooting percentage. How about 90% from the charity strike? Yeah, and that's really a luxury because you know he's going to get fouled. You know, a big guy like that, and he's going to go to the line, and so if he's knocking him down, gives you a good chance if you're wheeling. I think right now they're not sure if it's yeah, they just a bonus it. or not. It's not yet. That was the sixth foul. They're going to call it underneath here. Now they're going to shoot as the foul is called on Devin Hayde, and I believe that is number two on Mr. Hayde. This time, Alex Smith goes to the line, a 70% free throw shooter. And it was just one of those things, people trying to get position and people trying to stop them from getting position. Yeah, nice out of bounds play for Wheeling. Lots of movement and cutting and picked up a foul. The one-on-one -on -one is no good, but it is tipped back up and in by Marcus Johnson. Extends that lead to five. Into the front court comes Notre Dame, right side. Thought about a three, it's not there. Now they're going to work it out and back it out 
Spin move in the lane, got the defender up, work it underneath to Jones. Jones comes out, three, right wing, yes. Shot is up for Trent Williams, and he knocks it down. I guess Jones knew what he was doing. I think everybody in the gym thought, you need to take that layup, and instead he kicked it out for three. Had the wide open three now on the other side. We've talked about it tonight. You cannot, and no team can leave a lane open like that. Obviously, you want to guard the perimeter and watch out, but look how the lane just opens up right there. And then Notre Dame, the only choice they had was to collapse on the, uh, the shooter. And of course, it leads to a foul. That sends Sean Ely to the line, an 84% free throw shooter. He's got 11 points on the night. And a really hard foul right there by Jones we saw on the monitor. I mean, he was, that was close to not making a play on the basketball. And, and in fact, I think they may take a look at this right here. Not sure. May yeah, and that's, you know, that's the discussion. I'm not sure they're going to send the uh, uh, teams to the bench while they talk about it. Now they're going to walk over and take a look. And, and that's kind of what we talked about. You've got to make a play on the ball. So could call an intention, could switch it to an intentional foul. I guess they could switch it maybe even to a, a flagrant. Um, not sure that they would go flagrant. It may go intentional, which – Almost, I guess, equates to a technical. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a it's a penalty in the sense that we only we get two shots and the ball back, so you get an extra possession. Yeah, this was. The, I'm sure that's the conversation right there. It would not surprise me if that's the call. Yeah. So they uh, the two officials are reviewing it. Third official kind of hanging out at midcourt as the teams try to drift their way out to the court, and the officials like, no, not yet. Go sit down. But they are going to take a look at different things. Of course, we'll find out exactly what they're looking at uh, here in just a moment. But we do believe that is indeed what they are looking at is was a play made on the ball because you do have to do that. Now they're going to talk about it. Officials continue the discussion. This is the 2024 Mountain East Conference Men's Basketball Tournament. We're in the first part of the bracket. Here's what we've got. So a common foul is called after the review, and we'll shoot two. Foul's called on, I believe he said gold two. That's Javante Jones. So that's who they were trying to decide. Okay, it wasn't so much whether it was uh, an attempt on the ball. It went who actually committed the fouls originally called on Andre Harris. That has been now credited to Javante Jones. That's his first. So here comes the free throw. Shot up. Good. Good free throw shooting teams. Uh, you know, and, and my wife will tell you because, you know, we will watch games whether we're, you know, at the venue or watching on television, and I'm just like pounding the, the, uh, the recliner in our cave, as we call it, just trying to figure out why is why can't we make free throws? Why can't we make a – because really, if you go back and, you know, again, we played, you coached, you've officiated, the first two shots that they teach you is a layup and a free throw, right? So, you know, when you're seven, six, seven, eight years old, and then for some reason people get to the collegiate level, can't make a layup, can't make a free throw. Ah, insane. Yeah, it's We're, tough. It's tough. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> with all of that delay right there, you yeah. know, you, you you know coaches freeze players before they shoot the free throw. That was almost like freezing Ely, but he stepped right in and made the two shots after the delay. Stepped right up and knocked it down. Coming up at halftime, the Omni Strategic Technology Halftime Report. We'll take a look at statistics. And recap the first half as we wind down toward halftime. Notre Dame with the basketball. Backing out of there is Joshua Dames. Dames has it, hands it off to Hayde. Hayde had the hot hand early. He's got 16 points to lead all scorers. Shot clock winding down to about 10 seconds. Notre Dame's got to make a decision. Now here's the spin move. Driving in, Marcus Johnson blocks the shot. Rebound comes down to Notre Dame. It comes out two wheeling and then an attempted steal and a foul 
is committed. I think that's going to be Hade. I think it's pretty obvious that Hade's going to get the foul call, but Johnson comes in, blocks the shot. Rebound came down to the Notre Dame player. Uh, Harris put it back up, and then he missed it, and then it gets basically volleyballed out to midcourt. Yeah, and a tough third personal foul called right there on Hayden. It was an obvious one, but not a not a not a smart one on his part right there. They, you know, they need him in the second half, and that was one he, you know, he gave away right there. Front end of the one and one by Ely is up and no good. Ball knocked out of bounds by Wheeling's T. Harris, and it'll be Notre Dame basketball. They've got uh, eh, 13 seconds, really plenty of time. You know, you see teams. Uh, and I think that's the kind of the standard is to go from one end of the court to the other, and you need at least four seconds to get up the court and a decent shot off. And they got three times that. Let's see what Notre Dame can do. Jogging into the front court is Audio. Sets up in the corner. Three on the way. Side of the iron, no good. Wheeling with the rebound. Here is a three-quarter court shot. Good if it goes, and it hits the shot clock. So that does not count and we are at halftime. We 52 to 48. That is our halftime. The, both the teams are clearing the court. And this I didn't notice. I saw in warm up, by the way, um, that is Trevor Bearsford for Wheeling and in warm ups he did something and he's been sitting on the bench icing his leg, and now he limps off the court, so probably won't see him tonight. So we are at halftime. We'll step away when we come back. The Omni Strategic Technologies Halftime Report. You're listening to the 2024 Mountain East Conference Championships. Wheeling and Notre Dame are at the half on the Mountain East Digital Network. West Virginia's largest restoration company is now in the heart of the Mountain State. With a location in Charleston, joining our branches in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, we'll be there to help when you need it most. Our expert team and state-of-the-art equipment is ready to serve the Kanawha Valley 24 hours a day. From water damage to fire restoration, when disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Mountaineers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. and Bordas, fighting for justice. We are at halftime. It is time for the Omni Strategic Technologies Halftime Report. Omni Strategic Technologies, better business through technology. Greg White, EJ Shodzinski here. Uh, Notre Dame and Wheeling. It's the men's bracket, the 8-9 matchup. And Wheeling jumped out several times to a double-digit lead. Notre Dame didn't have any quit. They just kept chipping away, chipping away, getting blocked, getting turnovers, and hit a couple big three-point shots. And I still think, you know, four points at halftime is anybody's game. It really is, and it's it's a fun game to watch. Both teams playing at a high level on offense. They're shooting great percentages. They have go-to players. It's a close game, and I, I've got one for you, Greg. Did you know that the coaches were also close friends? I did not. In fact, I got a text here from Commissioner Reed Amos, and yeah. he says, we believe this may be the first time in the NBC tournament that two coaches were in the same wedding party. <laughs> and so he says that Mark Richmond was in Chris Richardson's wedding. 
in wow. 2017, and so I told Rita I would make sure I got that in. But well, yeah, you know, we've got a close game, we got close friends, and we're all having a good time in Wheeling. I'm not sure I've ever heard of that. That's pretty neat. I think it's a, it's a first. They might put it in the record books here, first in MEC history. I would think that would be there. You know, what would be really cool is if we could get uh, you know uh, Butch and the guys a wedding picture that they could put up on the stream. That'd be that'd be real. He's probably out on Facebook right now. I wonder if I can track that down yeah let's track it down that is pretty cool so we are at halftime the two teams are battling it out let's get you set up uh for uh tomorrow's action this is the last game of day number one notre dame and wheeling in the men's bracket now for the women's basketball tournament we had two games earlier today number 10 notre dame stuns number seven glenville state 82 78 in overtime a phenomenal basketball game i got to watch that one and then you and I had the call between number nine, West Virginia Wesleyan, and number eight, West Liberty. The Bobcats from Buchanan get that win, 77-64. to So here's the schedule for tomorrow. At noon, the 10 seed, Notre Dame, will take on the two seed, West Virginia State, Charles Marshall and his crew, uh, ready to do battle with Lauren Maser and her crew. That's at noon tomorrow. 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. The three seed and the six seed, Frostburg State and Concord. The uh, six o'clock game, game you and I will have, number one, Fairmont State, and number nine, West Virginia Wesleyan. And then at 8.30 tomorrow night, we round out day number two with number four, Charleston, and number five, Wheeling. So that's kind of how the bracket's set up. Today is two women's game in the morning, two men's games at night. Tomorrow, it's all women all day. Friday, it's all men all day. Then we get into the quarters on Saturday and the championship games on Sunday. You can follow those games on mountaineast.tv and starting tomorrow also on wvmetronews.com, the streaming platform. So it's just a great opportunity. And, you know, we take a minute. You live here in the area. This is an amazing venue, but it's not just a basketball arena. They do all kinds of stuff here. Yeah, this is multi-purpose. Their, uh, their bread and butter is their hockey team, the Wheeling Nailers. Of course, they have probably 40, 40 activities, 40 games for that, and then it's uh, then they host concerts and and basketball tournaments and wrestling events, cheerleadings, and so it's it's a it's a well used facility, and it's it's probably it's probably 10 years ahead of downtown as far as being renovated. You know, right. this has been this was completely renovated. West Banco did a great job, and. Uh, and in, in a few short years, downtown Wheeling is going to look lights out as well. Yeah, it is beautiful. And, of course, our uh, presenting sponsor, the Health Plan, they are just up the street. I was talking with a uh, uh, very nice lady, Tricia, earlier this evening. Uh, we had a nice conversation. She's with the Health Plan and telling me about all the great things that they do, including bringing this basketball. So we have – all right, so we have breaking news. We were talking about this. And uh, third, first of all, thanks to Butch and uh, Brian for finding this. So we were talking the two coaches from this game tonight, Chris Richardson and Mark Richmond. Mark Richmond, and you can see it on your screen, is second one from the left. And then, of course, the groom is Chris Richardson. How cool is that? First of all, thank you, Commissioner, for letting us know about that situation. That's really cool. And thanks to Butch and Brian for finding that and putting it up on the screen. We have video evidence. We do, and we also want to give uh, you know kudos to to Chris's wife Katie. Yeah, you know, she was part of that picture in 2017, and she so very, uh, beautiful family bride. affair. Yeah, it looked like uh, looked like a really uh, really nice wedding and yeah. beautiful weather, and <laughs> great to see the coaches. <laughs> there. Oh, they took and they got married on the unit. All right, so wait a minute. The, the Notre Dame coach and the Wheeling coach got married at the uni- – uh, 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 were in a wedding at the University of Charleston. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. They And, you know, they yeah. went they went through Institute to get to their honeymoon down to Athens, picked up Concord, and then they went up to Frostburg, then they went up to no- – so they hit every school in the Mountain East as, you know, his wife's like, another basketball game? Anyway, <laughs> hey, we're going to step away for just a moment here on the Omni Strategic Technologies Halftime Report. When we come back, we'll take a look at the statistics 
and get you ready for the second half. You are listening to the 2024 Mountain East Conference Championship presented by the Health Plan from Metro News and the Mountain East Digital Network. Choosing health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The Health Plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The Health Plan, here for you. Bordis and Bordis, fighting for justice. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Yeah. <laughs> Choosing health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The health plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The Health Plan, here for you. I'm Keith Powell, and I'm in love with helping you get your next car, truck, or SUV. I love saying yes to $2 down. I love saying yes to $200 monthly payments. I love saying yes to up to $2,000 more for your trade. And I love saying yes to your approved with my Keith Says Yes credit approval process. All of this plus a lifetime warranty, only at Yes Chevrolet in Hurricane. It is halftime here at West Banco Arena in Wheeling. Teams are out getting warmed up. Time now for the halftime statistics presented by Calcaruth Roofing and Sheet Metal. Leave your roof to us. So let's take a look at the numbers. Uh, Wheeling in the lead, 52 to 48. Wheeling shooting 58% 58% from the floor. That's 18 out of 31. Three point shots seven out of 14 for wheeling that's 50 percent of course nine out of 12 at the free throw line 75 percent uh they have five turnovers and 22 rebounds they are actually out rebounding notre dame right now 22 to 12 leading scorer for the cardinals sean ely with 13 10 points for alex smith eight points for t harris Six points for Marcus Johnson. Five points for Jerry Saunders Jr., William Gabbert, and S.J. Hutchinson with three points each. 
Kevin Coleman Jr. and Kobe Tigney with two points. Caleb Murray has played but has not scored. For Notre Dame, 54% from the floor, 46% from three-point range. They are five out of 11. So if you do the math, 12 three-point shots combined by the two teams, and they are seven out of 12 from the free throw line. That is 58%. They've turned the ball over three times. They are led in scoring by the leading scorer of the game, Devin Hayde with 16 points. Andre Harris has 14, nine points. For Joshua Dames, he is three out of six from three-point range. R.J. Ogum and Bolahan Audio, along with Javante Jones, have two points apiece. Jamar Talbert and Gio Moore have both played but have not scored. So we're about a minute away from the start of the second half here in Wheeling, our final game of the first day of this tournament. It goes all the way through Sunday. Now, due to the high school basketball tournament, the girls' high school basketball tournament, that kind of affects how Metro News does, satellite, radio, TV, things like that. So basically what we're going to do for you this week, tonight, It's on the Mountain East Digital Network at mountaineast.tv starting tomorrow through Saturday. Actually, tomorrow and Friday, the games will be on Metro News TV and mountaineast.tv. Saturday and Sunday, the games not only on Metro News TV, Mountain East TV, but also on the AT&T Pittsburgh Sportsnet. So... You're doing a couple of those games. No pressure. You'll just be live on TV all over the world. I'll make sure I comb my hair that day. I I think you should. I, on the other hand, no pressure at all. I'm coming here as a spectator. I'm working today and tomorrow, and then I'm coming back. I'll be sitting up in the stands, my feet up, bag of popcorn. I'll be in good shape. You know, I'm real. I'm, <laughs> I'm like the luckiest. I'm like the luckiest guy around. When this tournament, when Reed Amos brought this tournament to Wheeling. You know, I was probably one of the first guys that called him and said, you know, Reed, hey, if you need any help, I'd love to be involved. And uh, this is several years later. We're still here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do it every year, even back to when it was in Charleston, and then I've been here every year. And I'm the same way. We get around tournament time. I'm like, uh, hey, uh, I'll do as many games as you want. You want me to do them all? I'll do them all. So on the other side, it starts off, and just like that, a charge is called. Uh, as they backed it in. They tried to work it inside, but here's the charge right there. You saw Marcus Johnson take that big shoulder and just kind of dip it and just enough to get that charging call because we talked about that earlier in the game. What is a charge? What's a block? Oh, yeah, that was definitely a uh, player control foul, you know. But Marcus, got, he got penalized a little bit for his size right there, and uh, but he didn't knock him down. So on the other end, Notre Dame driving in. And I believe they just called the third foul on Marcus Johnson. That could be huge because we're just underway. Yeah, we're only only 24 seconds into the second half, and he picked up two additional fouls already. That's not the way Chris Richardson wanted to start the half. So Andre Harris missed the free throw. By the way, way, he... Producer Brian says the fouls on Marcus Johnson, two fouls uh, in the first 24 seconds within 12 seconds of each other. One foul, 12 seconds later, got another one. And be careful out there, Marcus, bringing it up against the press. Johnson jogs into the front court. Now he's just going to drive down. They're pushing him. They're shoving him. He throws up the shot, and then the foul is called. Notre Dame's R.J. Ogham. It's going to pick up the foul, or is that Devin Hayde? Oh, that's Devin Hayde. That's number four on Devin. So equally as detrimental for Notre Dame, Hayde, the leading scorer of both teams at 16 points, Marcus Johnson with three fouls. He'll go to the free throw line, and he knocks the first one down, as he normally does, a 90% free throw shooter. Yeah, he's uh, he's really effective right there, and I could see the – the Notre Dame coach and also some of the players say, hey, that was on 23, not 11, but <laughs> they tried. But, but they did not go over to the table to take a look. They were pretty sure. Or they were actually absolutely sure it was on uh, it was on Dade there. So both free throws are good for Johnson. Takes the lead back out to five. 
Now Notre Dame looking for a little offense. They come to the near side. That is Talbert into the ball game. Here is a three from the deep right corner. No good. Notre Dame a running rebound, stopping and popping is Ely for three. How good has he been tonight? Outstanding job by Sean Ely. Four out of six from three-point range. He's got 16 points. Now on the right side, Notre Dame trying to answer. They'll put the shot up from three. It rolls around and drops for audio. And Notre Dame answers, but kind of the theme of the first half, Wheeling would take the lead. Notre Dame would get to within one or two and then couldn't close it any further than that. There's a three on the way, no good, but Wheeling gets the rebound and resets the offense. Alex Smith pulls it down for the Cardinals. They'll get it to Marcus Johnson, the big guy, working against Ogham out high. Left side to Ely. Drives down, cut off. Johnson thought about a three. He's still thinking about it, and he's glad he did. He punches it in. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking as he lets it go, that's exactly what Notre Dame wants him to do, you know, shoot from 25, and there he goes, knocks it in. Now, on the other side, here's Talbert. Talbert trying to answer and no, but a rebound foul is called. And I think it is going to go against Alex Smith of Wheeling. It is, so Notre Dame will bring it in. I mean, what do you, how do you defend Johnson, hmm. you know? There's a three from the corner on the right side by Audio. He knocks down another three for Notre Dame. Yeah, I'd, well, I'd say Johnson is is the most difficult to defend when he catches the ball around the uh, around the three-point area at the top. If, if yeah. you leave him by himself, he's going to back you down. And here he is right here backing him down from the wing. You know, he's backing in. Now he's going to turn and fall away. Oh, my, he is unstoppable right now. Marcus Johnson backed in, stepped out, spun around, and dropped it. Leading contender for player of the game right now for sure. Now here's a deep three from the top of the key for Audio. He knocks down another one. Two heavyweights exchanging blows here. Four points is the lead for Wheeling. Johnson has it. He's thinking now he's just going to step back, put up another three. That one rimmed in and out. He was almost good for another basket. Weaving in and out of traffic. In the corner is Talbert. Steps back, nowhere to go with it. Has to get it to Audio. Audio working against Alex Smith. Good defense on the part of Alex Smith. They get the ball to Andre Harris. He'll drive down the right side of the lane. Shot is up. And a travel. No foul. A travel is called. The official blew the whistle, and he waited until everybody was paying attention. And he said, all right, it's not. But you can see right there as he started down the right side of the lane, Took one, he was just out of control, took one too many steps. Yeah, it was a good piece of officiating. I like the way they made eye contact. You ever you ever go to some, notice some games you'll have one official will have a block, the yeah. other official will have a charge. Well, this that wasn't going to happen right there because the one official made eye contact with the other and said, hey, I got this yeah, one. This Let's not have two calls. <laughs> and, and he got it right, and he called the travel and it went the other way. So yeah. – uh, You get all, yeah, that, that's always a nightmare when you get three different officials calling three different things. Now they're going to work it to Johnson. Look out, here he goes, falling away, knocks it down again. Oh, my. Oh, my. He is on fire here in the second half. 15 points on the night for the big man, Marcus Johnson. And just so people are aware, in the Mountain East, he's just a junior. He'll be back. Notre Dame trying to get some points, and a tie-up is called. Alex Smith, or, yeah, Alex uh, Smith called for the foul. Not happy, as you can see by his reaction. So he steps out and reaches in. And I think what got him, he had the ball with his right hand. The left hand kind of went under the arm and not the ball. And that's what got the foul call. So Notre Dame brings it in to Andre Harris. Harris picks up his dribble, looks for a little help, gets it, gets it to Dames. Dames drives in, shot up. Nope, but a foul is called, and that one could be 
against Alex Smith as well. So they bring it over and Dames got his defender off as Smith tried to get set. I, I think he was set, I don't think he was set long enough. That's, that's, that's one of those tough calls in basketball. That could have easily gone the other way. Notre Dame fortunate, they got the call that time. Free throw by Dames is up and good. 73% free throw shooter. And you know, we were talking about text. Of course, Commissioner Amos sent us one a minute ago. My my wife just texted me and she says, uh, Marcus Johnson is on fire. The most uh, the I guess the understatement of the night. <laughs> yeah, he's having a good time out there right now. The the basket must look really large to him because uh, everything he throws up is uh, is hitting the net. He is having a great game here tonight. Hard to defend. You want to defend him on the low block? Okay, he steps out and shoots a three. Now on the other side, here is Wheeling. Shot is up. A foul is called. And it almost looks like uh, the foul, by the way, called on Jerry or Jerry Saunders will go to the free throw line. And the foul is going to be called on audio. But it almost looks like the game plan of both coaches tonight uh, in the second half is let's try to get some people in foul trouble. Well, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that's what was said in halftime, but that's what's happening <laughs> yeah, out here. Happened, you yeah. know, uh, both teams have to be concerned right now with the, uh, the fouls that are adding up quickly. Well, for Wheeling, Johnson with three, Saunders with two, as the second free throw is up and no good. Rebound pulled down by Notre Dame. On the other side, uh, two fouls on Audio. He's the only one. Johnson strips the ball away. It is a turnover. He's a big man's going to bring it up himself, push it over on the right side. They'll kick it out. They left him open for three off the front of the iron. It looked good, just a little bit short. Now on the other side, Talbert loses the handle, steps back, falling away. Cannot get it to fall, and on the rebound, a whistle and a foul. That foul is going to be called on Jerry Saunders, Jr., so kind of frenetic action as Saunders came in, backed up, did the best he could on the defense. The shot didn't go, but Notre Dame gets a possession. Now here's a three from the right side. No good. Rebound fought for, controlled by Notre Dame. Out high, another three on the way. Front of the iron, no good. And this time, Notre Dame gets it again. Two rebounds in a row. Here's their third attempt at a three, and third time's the charm for Audio. He drains it from long distance. Yeah, oftentimes offensive rebounds lead to open three-pointers, and that's what happened right there. Now we've got, uh, looks like kind of a little pushing and shoving going on that leads to a foul. And that will take us to a timeout. Our coverage continues. It's day number one. We're going to be here through Sunday. It is the 2024 Mountain East Conference Championship brought to you by the Health Plan from Metro News and the Mountain East Digital Network. I'm Keith Powell, and I'm in love with helping you get your next car, truck, or SUV. I love saying yes to only $2 down. I love saying yes to $200 monthly payments. I love saying yes to up to $2,000 more for your trade. And I love saying yes to your approved with my Keith Says Yes credit approval process. All of this plus a lifetime warranty only at Yes Ford in Huntington. Island is your destination for the hottest slots and table games, sports and racing, plus an all-you-can-eat buffet, fine dining at the point, and a loaded entertainment schedule. Only at Wheeling Island Hotel Casino Racetrack. Visit WheelingIsland.com for more information. My name is Nathan and this is my Chick-fil-A success story. As a team member, I was blown away to receive a Chick-fil-A scholarship that helped me pay for grad school and achieve my dream job. And now I'm a physical therapist and I get to do what I love every day, make an impact and help people get back to their lives. And just think, it all started with Chick-fil-A and man, that's pretty awesome. The 2024 Mountain East Conference Championships from West Banco Arena here in Wheeling. And uh, 
it's been a back and forth affair and, and we've talked about it it's kind of the the predominant theme of the game notre dame can get close they just can't get over the hump they've gotten as close as two which is where they are right now wheeling has the basketball they get it to johnson the big man dangerous from three dangerous on the low block dangerous everywhere Shot clock down to five seconds. They wanted to go into Johnson. It's not there now. Ely's just going to step back, throw up the shot, and knock it down. Oh, my. Great night. Yeah, he's on fire tonight, he and Johnson. Ely's got 18 points to lead all scorers now. And Notre Dame with a whistle underneath. That foul going to be called on... I'm not sure. Did they call that on Tigney of Wheeling? Yeah, they sure did. And that's, uh, yeah, seventh foul against the Cardinals. So this is where we talked about the importance of free throws. You've got almost 14 minutes left, and we uh, Notre Dame shooting free throws for the rest of the game. Got to make them, and there's the first one. Got to make them. The, the importance of free throws in a game like this cannot be overstated. That's for sure. Ready again, it got very quiet in here. <laughs> Second free throws up and good. So they keep chipping away, chipping away, back to that two-point advantage. Here comes Wheeling. Ely into the front court looking. Not much there, Marcus Johnson battling. I'm watching that battle underneath as they get it to Johnson. He's going to back in. Back in. Now he's just going to turn around, fire it up. No good. Rebound there off the front of the rim. No good. And Notre Dame on a run out. Here we go. Slam dunk by Andre Harris, and we are tied. Right back to where we started. 0-0. Zero, zero. Here we go again. Now here's Wheeling. They want to go underneath to Johnson defensively. Good job by Trent Williams. He's keeping an eye on him. The ball is poked away. It's a turnover. Lead pass out ahead. And now they'll reset the offense. Smart play by Notre Dame to get it. Here's the drive and a nice layup. Joshua Dames, beautiful feed as he came from the corner on the near side down the baseline. They found him with a soft pass, and he gently laid it in. Really big possession here for Wheeling. They just gave up the lead for the first time. They got to get something good. Now here is a long three on the way. Comes off the front of the iron, no good. And oh my, Trent Williams is very upset. He thought that T. Harris was going to get called for going over the back. The official said Williams took his arm and swept the defender away from him. Yeah, it's really tough. I know. I know what. Uh, I know what he's telling his coach. Coach, that's what you told me to do in right. practice. Uh, but he might have taken it to the next level, Williams. Gets tagged for a tough one. That is a tough foul. Wheeling will inbound it. On the left side is Hutchinson. Hutchinson backs out and now works over. They tried to go inside. Ball is almost stolen away. Quick hustle by Joshua Dames for Notre Dame. Came in, poked the ball away, tried to run it down and just a little too far against the sideline. Yeah, he just needed one more step and he was gonna be there. Now on the other side, Ely drives in and puts up the shot with a hop step in the lane and we're tied up again. Yeah, and Ely's showing a lot of strength right there. There was a ton of contact and he fought through it. You know, and, and, and the thing, and you know, you hate it you don't want to talk about it, but, you know, you watch this Notre Dame team. Of course, the women's team won earlier today. The men's team trying to get the win here tonight. Uh, you know, it was announced not long ago, uh, a couple days ago, that, you know, unfortunately Notre Dame College will be closing its doors. So, you know, a lot of these players, you know, they want to keep playing, and this may be their last chance to do that. Obviously, with this team, it'll be their last chance. They may have, you know, transfer other places, but – yeah, they want to keep going, and they're going to play hard. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so they have a little bit of extra incentive, and really tough situation up there for Notre Dame. I was I was talking to their SID in the in between games, and it's tough for the players, the employees, oh sure, the community. It's uh, it's it's really 
It's really a tough situation. Well, you know, down, of course, in the area I live in, Alders and Broadus, we just went through that in that area with that college. So. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it's really hit the Mountain East when you think about it. Uh, Urbana and now Notre Dame and A.B. and Ohio Valley. And it, it, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's troublesome. Dame's one out of two at the free throw line. Notre Dame tipping to a one-point lead. Now Wheeling looking for offense. Now they have not had as much luck feeding it inside to Johnson. Uh, and, it, and there's a perfect example. We've seen that in the second half earlier. It looked to me like Notre Dame was trying to defend him down a little bit low. Now what they're doing is getting in the passing lanes. They're not getting near Johnson per se. They're just getting in the passing lanes and knocking the ball away from him. Yeah, it's got to be a team effort against Johnson because one guy is not going to do it. And, and uh, not sure what's going on over there on the sideline, but we're ready to play ball now. Yeah, having a conversation with an official and a couple of players. Now on the other side, driving in, shot is up. And Johnson backing in, backing in, and he is going to be fouled. So he takes the inbound, and they didn't get the ball smacked away, and he spins, and really not a whole lot of contact, you know, maybe a little bit off balance as Dames goes to the floor, and Marcus Johnson will go to the free throw line. Johnson at the line, two out of two. He's got 15 points overall. He's ready to go with the first one, swish. Wow. <laughs> I mean, he that is he is one of the more impressive players uh, that I've seen in the Mountain East for a while. Kind of like um, uh, Will Voorhees that played at yeah. Notre Dame a couple years ago. Big guy inside, but can also shoot it outside. Yeah, he's a handful. And Notre Dame actually did a pretty good job defending him there, but right at the end, slapped down and uh, creates two foul shots. Now here's Talbert for Notre Dame, pushes it over on the right side. Floater is up and good for Trent Williams. So back and forth in this seesaw battle. It's fun. These, these, game, these are the kind of games that are fun. That's what I tell people all the time. There is great basketball being played in the Mountain East Conference. On the other side, driving in, shot is up. No good for Kevin Coleman. Notre Dame pulls the rebound down. Talbert has it, hands it off to audio and Johnson intercepts the pass like a cornerback headed for the end zone spin move in the lane shot up off glass no Falcons with the rebound and they come into the front court driving down and a block is called and it's kind of one of those eye contact thing with the official that you were talking about earlier the near side official immediately looked to the official closest you can see it right here and again the defender backpedaling and that's going to get the charge as long as there's not you know an obvious arm extension whatever he's backpedaling and that's going to be a block 95 percent of the time yeah it's a that's what they call a bang bang call right there and uh this one goes notre dame's way and uh they're at the line andre harris the red shirt junior 58 percent free throw shooter on the season front end of the one and one left it short ball tipped out to <laughs> Harris got his own rebound off the missed free throw. They go to Audio left side. Audio drives into the foul line. He is cut off there to Talbert. Right side, three. Side of the iron, no good. Johnson pulls down the rebound. All the way down now as they work it to Alex Smith. He drives in, shot up, and good. Technical foul has just been called on Alex Smith, so he made the basket and gets the technical foul. The officials are, or the uh, players are applauding that, so Smith drives in, gets the shot up, lays it down, and the only thing I can think of, I guess, from an officiating standpoint, is he, he kind of knocked the ball out of bounds. Yeah, and he must, he must have said something. Uh, he, he did, there was contact there on the drive. The officials let him play through it, and he made the basket. He probably said something like, and one, or how about the foul? And that, So, you know what? Unfortunately, he got the foul, a technical foul. Yeah, 
two free throws. One was good, one was not. We are tied up at 73. Halfway through. So that's what I guess we refer to that as a Class A technical. That's two shots in the ball. Two shots in the ball, that's right. So Notre Dame ties it up on the free throw. Now they get the basketball. They work it underneath, backing in. Shot is up off glass, no. And a foul is going to be called. Andre Harris will go to the free throw line when we come back from the break. It's the 2024 Mountain East Conference Championships presented by the Health Plan for Metro News and the Mountain East Digital Network. Hit the Highlands for great products and services from local shops like Nini's Treasures, Howard's Diamond Center, Bauer Decor Market, Tony's Spa, and more. For all your local shopping needs, hit the Highlands. Omni. We believe that every client deserves a design solution that reflects their individual style and needs. With a focus on innovative and creative designs while being mindful of your budget, we are committed to bringing your project to reality. Contact us today and let's get started to create your one-of-a-kind project. Omni Architects. For over 40 years, creating design solutions that are as unique as our clients. Regional State Farm Insurance Agents, proud to support the 2024 Mountain East Conference Tournament. Call one of the MEC sponsoring agents today. Mark Zeck in Grafton, Chad Broadwater in Wheeling, Carrie Bailey in Fairmont, Rob Johnson in Clarksburg, Mike Tomes in New Martinsville, and Jody Perrick in Elkins. So we are shooting free throws here in uh, the second half of this game, and it, it's really turned into a ball game. You know, we had an overtime game earlier today to start the tournament. Maybe we end the first day with another one. First free throw is up <laughs> and good for Andre Harris. Well, I did that for our producer Brian's well, you know, well, uh, sure. benefit. <laughs> well, sure. And in, in that first game, it, you know, of course, it was Notre Dame as well playing for their lives. and. Uh, the schools, you know, the school is going to be closing, and so they were able to continue their uh, their their women's program for one more game at least, and the men are trying to do the same. Wheeling with the basketball, working on the left, driving in. Nope, foul is called. Foul is going to be called. Looks like on Joshua Dames. Yeah, it is. Yeah, a little too much contact. Arm came up high and. They are going to call it. So only number six on the uh, team foul. So Notre Dame has one to give. Here is a quick catch and shoot. Air ball out of bounds. It goes off of Talbert for Notre Dame. It'll stay with Wheeling. So he circled around, had the look he wanted, just uh, kind of maybe rushed the shot just a little bit. 15 on the shot clock. Working around the screen he is Ely. Ely, spin move in the lane, kicks it out. Gabbert, three, top of the key, will not fall. Rebound pulled down by Notre Dame, and a foul called on the rebound as uh, Jerry Saunders comes over off the miss. It caroms out, and then Saunders going after the basketball makes contact. Talbert jumps over a chair and goes about three rows up into the bleachers, sets down, has a hot dog, and comes back. Yeah, and he's going to come back and have two foul <laughs> shots because they're in the double bonus now. Already a lot of fouls. They mounted up against Wheeling, and this is where free throws are important for Notre Dame right now. They are 8 out of 13. Make it 9 out of 14. He sinks the first one. 
So Johnson was getting a little bit of a breather. And, I, you know, I kind of watched that. He didn't come out at all in the first half. He's only been out for a couple minutes here in the second half. I mean, this is just, a, again, a very impressive basketball player in Marcus Johnson, the junior. Free throw. Oh, in and out. Rebound volleyed out high, fought for, controlled by Wheeling. Just a two-point lead for Notre Dame. Back and forth we go. Ely has it. Spin move in the lane. Works around a nice screen. Little too strong. Comes off the glass. Johnson had a couple of defenders in front of him. He smacks it, and it goes into the hands of Notre Dame. Now they bring it out. Work it on the right wing. Top of the key. Good ball movement. They bring it around. Thinking about a three is Andre Harris. He's changed his mind. Now they come to Talbert. Talbert with the crossover dribble, loses the handle, but it goes right into the hands of Trent William. Left side, three on the way, air ball, four, audio, and it'll be a turnover. You know, we've, we've bragged an awful lot tonight about Johnson, but how about his perimeter defense? He's, he's actually guarding a, a guard out there mm -hmm. at his size and doing a pretty good job at it. You know, it's like nobody told him he's six foot seven and about 280. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I mean, he's matched up with Andre Harris on both ends, and uh, this is this is a tough matchup for both guys. He just backed him down, back him down, back him down, and three defenders for Notre Dame trying to slow him down. I mean, he catches it. He's backing in, backing in against Harris. Then they collapse down. Then another one steps in. He can't get it to go, but he will go to the free throw line, and we're shooting free throws for the rest of the night. First one is up and good as Wheeling now, every foul committed against them will lead to a one and one, at least for the next couple. And then they'll go to the double bonus and Notre Dame already shooting two free throws with every foul. Johnson, nice shot, swishes it in. Six out of six from the line. He's got 19 points on the night and four rebounds. We're tied up again, just a fun basketball game to watch here to close out night number one of the Mountain East Conference Tournament. And there's a turnover. Miscommunications, Trent Williams just throws it right to Wheeling. Cardinals set up on offense, driving in, getting position off the glass. No good. Shot is up for Hutchinson. It comes off the rim and comes down to Notre Dame. Falcons into the front court, driving down the lane. They bring it out to Talbert. Talbert works around the screen, moving screen as the three is good, but it won't count. And the screen will be called on Andre Harris. Right there, you see he moved into the defender. If he would have just stepped to the left and kind of stood still, might have been okay. Yeah, and we're, we're all tied up at 75. You can see it on the players' faces every time. There's a there's a, call, a foul called. It's uh, it's, it's excruciating for him. It is. This is a great basketball game. Marcus Johnson goes in, tries to lay it over the left side of the rim. It won't fall for him. They get it to Notre Dame on the rebound. Here is a three, top of the key, swished in by Bolahan Audio. Seven. That was a big shot too. At this stage in the game, that's a big shot. It really was. Willing needs to get something good. Now here's Ely, works with it on the right wing, looking for Johnson, they've got him hemmed up. They come out, here's a three to answer. It's an air ball right into the hands of Johnson, under the basket, too far under the basket as he put it up. I think he was further under the basket than he thought he was. Yeah, I think you're right. He got a little bit tangled up there and uh, that wasn't his strongest effort on the night. A little bit off balance. Notre Dame with a chance to extend this lead. They drift over to the right. Williams thought about a three, now he'll take it. Front of the iron, no good. Johnson with the rebound. The big man jogs up the near sideline. Push pass to the top of the key to Ely. Ely, crossover, stops, drives, he's cut off. Now he brings it out, Gabbert, three to tie, yes! And just like that, a big three from William Gabbert. And we got a timeout on the court. It is a good one. It will continue the 2024 Mountain East Conference Basketball Championships on the Mountain East Digital Network. Choosing health coverage for your family, your employees, 
and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The Health Plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The Health Plan, here for you. It is, quite simply put, a fantastic basketball game that you and I get to watch here and all the folks watching on the Mountain East Digital Network. Just a fun game, back and forth. Wheeling led most of the first half. Notre Dame never really could get there to tie it up or take the lead. Then they did, and now it's back and forth. Just an amazing game. It really is a great game, and you got to remember this is a nine seed versus an eight seed. It really shows you the level of play in the Mountain East is, is really good basketball. Winner of this one gets the number one seed Charleston Friday at 6 p.m. That's the men's bracket on Friday. Starts at noon with the three seed Concord and the six seed Davis and Elkins. The two seed West Liberty at 2.30, we'll face Glenville State, the seven seed at six o'clock on Friday, Charleston, the winner of this game. And then a game that I am excited about. I saw the first match. We'll see how it goes. West Virginia State and Fairmont State Friday night at 8.30. Can't wait for that one. Yeah, and that's really an elimination game because those teams need a win to have a chance to get to the regional tournament. The loser's gonna be out. Indeed. and. Uh, I mean, they, they battled it out in the regular season and a great game down at West Virginia State near the end of the season. Um, Fairmont ended up getting the win. And like I said, I think that game I'm pretty excited about seeing. Yeah, it'll be a good one. Free throws coming for Notre Dame and Hade back into the basketball game. Can't get it to go. He'll get another one. Devin Hade, uh, 16 points on the night. He's five out of six at the free throw line. He is on the floor with four fouls, and he missed the second one. And that might just be he's been on the bench for quite some time, might still be a little cold. Yeah, he really has been on the bench. He still has 16 points, but he's been on the bench half the night. Yeah, most of those coming in the first half. On the other side, spinning, getting cut off, coming back out is Gabbert. Gabbert watched by Hade. Hade's got to be careful. Playing with four fouls. Now on the other side, I think Hade just fouled out of the basketball game. I cannot imagine that's going to be on anybody other than Hade as they drove in, and he tried to get position. It looked like the uh, player was going to go underneath, and Hade goes up. He is uh, injured as well, and I think he just picked up his fifth foul. Yep, coming to the bench. So Devin Hade, the red shirt sophomore, Fouling out of the game, five out of seven from the floor, five out of seven at the free throw line, 16 points, and four rebounds for Hayde. And he'll be doing what we're doing for the rest of the game, watching. Yeah, yeah, really frustrating half for him. He only got really got to play about a minute in that second half, picked up one in the first minute, and then he just checked back in and picks up his second, and he's eliminated. So S.J. Hutchinson at the line, that's the seventh lead change of the night as the free throw is up and good. Second one on the way, got it. Good free throw shooting team, 76%, and I think any coach would be happy with a team that shot 76% from the free throw line. Yeah, it's gonna help you to win a lot of basketball games. I know coaches that would be happy with 50% <laughs> at the free throw line. So Notre Dame with the basketball, looking for points. Cut off there, driving in, forcing up the shot, and somehow Andre Harris got it. 
to go. He worked, he worked, he worked. And then he just went up and put it in. Eighth tie of the game tonight. Ely for Wheeling has it. Looking, comes to the right side. Johnson wants a three off the front of the rim. This time, no good. Notre Dame with the rebound. Audio into the front court, out high. Right side, working with it, around. Give and go, reverse layup, up and good for Talbert. He found the baseline, and we've got our eighth lead change of the night, Notre Dame up by two. And a great look away setup by Dames. I thought he was coming over here to the wing, and instead he hit Talbert down low. Now spinning, looking for the shot. It goes up, no good is Sean Ely. And the rebound pulled down by the Falcons of Notre Dame. Time running down low, four minutes to go in this one. Alex Smith over at the scorer's table, ready to check back in for Wheeling. Now here's Talbert, top of the key, watch there by Gabbert. Talbert drops in, falling away from about 12. It won't fall for him. Rebound to Marcus Johnson. Johnson, lead pass out ahead. Gabbert intercepts it at midcourt. Looked like it was going to get over his head, and he manages to pull it down, and Notre Dame resets the offense. Johnson working, working. Quick handoff, driving down the lane. Shot is up and no good for S.J. Hutchinson. And the foul is going to be called against Notre Dame. We got another timeout. What a good one we got. Make sure you stick around for the final three minutes and 26 seconds of regulation. The Mountain East Conference Basketball Championships from Metro News and the Mountain East Digital Network. Choosing health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company is one of the most important decisions you can make. The health plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. We are here for your family. We are here for your business. We'll be here for you when you need us most because your health coverage is our priority. The health plan, here for you. I'm Keith Powell, and I'm in love with helping you get your next car, truck, or SUV. I love saying yes to $2 down. I love saying yes to $200 monthly payments. I love saying yes to up to $2,000 more for your trade. And I love saying yes to your approved with my Keith Says Yes credit approval process. All of this plus a lifetime warranty only at Yes Chevrolet in Hurricane. City of Wheeling, Notre Dame getting instructions from their head coach, Mark Richmond. It is a tight ball game. We've had eight ties and eight lead changes here tonight. Most of those coming in the second half of action. And right now, Notre Dame hanging on to a two-point lead, but we'll go to the free throw line with S.J. Hutchinson. 62% free throw shooter on the, on the season, but he's four out of five here tonight. And, you know, that's the thing. You look at these numbers and some of the lower numbers we've seen. We talked earlier, the young lady from West Virginia Wesley and a 50% free throw shooter, and she was perfect at the line tonight. Hutchinson knocks that one down. So, you know, you, you make them when it counts, and everybody forgets what you did in the regular season. Yeah, and they really count here in the last three minutes and 26 seconds. Got to make your foul shots. We are tied again. Tie number nine of the ball game. Falcons of Notre Dame into the front court. They come with Audio working it to Andre Harris. Back to Audio. Drives in. Cut off there. Here's the give and go. Drive, shoot. Oh, out of control. Andre Harris couldn't get it to fall. Rebound comes down to the Cardinals. Wheeling. I'll tell you, Andre is not going to miss many of those. Indeed, he's not, and they actually got what they wanted. Johnson was on the low block, came out to the high post, and it was too wide open, I think. 
So here comes Wheeling on the left side, Ely. Johnson is hit from three. Johnson is hit down low. He's going to drive in. He's going to put it up over the rim. It will not fall again. Johnson has had a little bit of struggles here in the second half getting those shots at the rim. In the corner, they go. Audio has it for Notre Dame. Comes all the way through. Now he'll set back up on the left side. This is Andre Harris. Talbert with the catch. He'll drive in, shot up, it will not fall. Easiest rebound of the night for Marcus Johnson. He just kind of stood there and it came right to him. And bodies hit the floor underneath, but now we're back to five on five. Now here comes Ely for Wheeling. Watched at the top of the key by, Jav or check me, by Dames. Goes all the way through, the ball is going to be kicked. It will stay with Wheeling. And you know, we've, we've seen a lot more shots uh, missed here in the last four or five minutes. At this point, as up and down as this game has been, nine ties, eight lead changes, I think these guys are starting to get tired. Yeah, without a doubt, especially Johnson. Keep an eye on him. He's he's come up short on several. Nice kick out here to Ely. He's been working hard here as a three on the way, rimmed in and out. No, but tipped back up and in by T. Harris. He went way up to tip that one back in. And it's lead change number nine. Yeah, great play by T. I mean, we we're just talking about tired legs. He doesn't have them. No, he apparently does not. So Notre Dame wants to take a timeout. Let's see how long this one is going to be. It is just a 30-second timeout. So, again, we'll keep it right here. Just to kind of recap the day, day number one of the Mountain East Conference Tournament started at uh, noon today. It was the seven seed in the women's bracket, Glenville State, and the 10 seed, Notre Dame. Glenville had the lead with about 20 seconds to go. A five point lead, Notre Dame got a three, got a stop, got the lay in near the end of the game, sent it to overtime and Notre Dame prevailed 82-78. And then at 2.30 this afternoon, the women's bracket, eight nine game, West Liberty, the eight seed falls to the nine seed, West Virginia Wesleyan 77 to 64. The men's bracket got underway at about six o'clock this evening. You and Jack Withrow had the call, Glenville State, Really no trouble with Frostburg State. They were quite dominant from start to finish. They get the win, 95-59. And now we've got this one, Notre Dame and Wheeling. And it's a good one. Falcons with the basketball. They pass up. Andre Harris drives, shoots, scores. Thought they were going to hand it to Talbert coming through. And instead, Harris drives down the left. Yeah, Harris really a determined player, giving up so much size to Johnson, but it hasn't deterred him. So here we go, coming down under a minute in the contest. Marcus Johnson has it. Works around a screen. He's picked up, he backs out. Now here he goes, he's gonna start his drive and the ball swatted away. Brought it down to his waist, Notre Dame with the turnover. Audio. Hands it off, driving, Harris to the basket, and he scores. Notre Dame's got the lead with 40 seconds to go. Wheeling on a run out. Here we go. Ely has it, drifts through. Spin move in the lane, shot is up, and he is going to be fouled. Oh, my. Drove down the lane, and I kind of, I almost think just by where he had the ball that his intention was to take that out to Johnson. I don't know that he was going to put it up, but then when he saw the lane open up, that's where he went. Now Ely at the line, an 84% free throw shooter. Four out of eight from there tonight. Our 10th lead change is Notre Dame with a two-point lead. Ely. Ready. Free throw. Good. 29 seconds to go in this one. If he makes it, Notre Dame can go for the last shot. If not, we're going to overtime. Ely ready again, free throw, got it. We are tied again, tie number 11 of the night. Shot clock is off, here we go. And we've got a timeout on the court. 
what do you think? Full time out here? What would you call? I think they're going to call full and get get their favorite play lined up right here and most likely get something for Harris going to the basket. Full time out. And so we will kind of discuss options. So, again, Andre Harris does have the hot hand here in the second half. He uh, leads all scorers with 26 points. He's 10 out of 13 from the floor. Most of those shots on goal. He's driving to the basket and floating it up. I think, though, if you look at the other side, the Wheeling Cardinals, they know that's what they're going to do. So I think your options for Wheeling, you've got to prevent it from going inside, force Notre Dame to put it up from three-point range. Notre Dame is five out of 11 from three-point range. Wheeling, three out of 11. It feels like more than that, but they've only hit three deep shots. Yeah. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of strategy going on in those huddles. You know, will Wheeling come out and man? Will they come out in the zone? You know, what's, uh, what's the lineup going to be for Notre Dame? A lot of things getting discussed right there. But I think when push comes to shove, Harris is going to have the ball in his hands, and he's going to try to get to the basket. Just some amazing numbers here tonight. 11 ties, 10 lead changes. 20, just under 24 seconds to go, as you can see. 10 and 17, Wheeling. 14 and 13, Notre Dame. Notre Dame has a chance to win it. Shot clock is off. It comes in to Harris. They get it to Audio. Watching that clock tick down. 15 seconds to go at a standstill. Look for Audio to try to get it to Harris. Waiting, and here he goes. It comes back to Audio. Drives in. Shot is up. It will not go. Rebound to Wheeling, and we are going to overtime here at the Mountain East Conference Championships. What a game we've got. My goodness. We're going to overtime. Five minutes up on the clock, and... We're going to step away for just a minute, let the teams regroup. We're going to regroup the 2024 Mountain East Conference Championship, the 8-9 game in the men's bracket, going to overtime. More to come from Wheeling, the Mountain East Conference Basketball Championships, presented by the Health Plan on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia, and the Mountain East Digital Network. I'm Keith Powell, and I'm in love with helping you get your next car, truck, or SUV. I love saying yes to $2 down. I love saying yes to $200 monthly payments. I love saying yes to up to $2,000 more for your trade. And I love saying yes to your approved with my Key Says Yes credit approval process. All of this plus a lifetime warranty only at Yes Chevrolet in Hurricane. How about a little bonus basketball for you on the opening night? We had the first game of today's tournament, of this year's tournament, go to overtime. And it was a game that featured Notre Dame, the women's team. Now the men's team in overtime. Alex Smith checks in for the Cardinals of Wheeling. They get it to Johnson. Johnson, spin move. He's in trouble, and he traveled with the basketball, trying to get position against a double team, working, working, and uh, just took one too many steps, and Notre Dame has a chance to go on offense. Every possession important right here. Wheeling kind of, kind of gave one up right there, try to get one back here. They're working with it to Audio. He'll hand it off to Danes, and... A foul is called. We've got a foul underneath. They just called T. Harris Jr. on a grab. 
as one of the Notre Dame players trying to cut through. And we're shooting free throws. Andre Harris at the line. Harris, six out of 11 from the free throw line tonight. These are big in overtime. First one up, front of the iron, falls out, no good. Just incredible, 11 ties and 10 lead changes. Yeah, it's been, it's been back and forth throughout. Ready again, free throw, swish. One out of two, make it 11 ties and now 11 lead changes. Notre Dame jumps out by a point. Ely into the front court for the Cardinals. Drives down, Johnson at the top of the key and they work it on the left side. Now they go down low. Defenders backing in, backing in, shot is up, shot is good for T. Harris Jr. Wheeling takes the lead. Just an incredible basketball game. What a great way to start the tournament. It'll be like this all week long. Now on the other side, here's Harris driving in, shot up. No, he can't get it to fall, but Andre Harris will go back to the free throw line. Seven out of 13 on the night. Has a chance to tie it with one, take the lead with two. That's going to be the fourth personal foul on Marcus Johnson for Wheeling, so that's a tough one right there. So Marcus Johnson uh, called for foul number four as Harris ready, free throw, yep, got it. He'll get another one. Devin Hayde, the redshirt sophomore for Notre Dame, fouled out in the second half. He's on the bench, willing his team to try to get a win. Second free throw is no good, and the Cardinals with the rebound. Knot it up again. Into the front court, Sean Ely slows it down, works around the screen. Wanted to drive down, good defense by Dames backing in. Now he'll step back and spot up. It's two. The official quickly turned to the scorer's table and said he was inside of the arc. So wheeling with the lead. Now to your side, here's Notre Dame. Audio has it out high, left side, nothing there. Now driving down the lane, scoop shot up, nice shot by Joshua Dames. I didn't think it was going to go. And it went straight up and straight back down. Yeah, and he came out of a shoe right there too. Got that speed happening, you know. We're tied again at 90. This is just a great, great basketball game. Three minutes to go as Ely kind of strolls into the front court, picked up on the defense. Johnson, top of the key. Notre Dame crowd chanting defense. Johnson drives in, shot is up, it's good, and he's fouled. Basket is good, the foul is gonna be called on Joshua Dames, that's number four on Joshua Dames. So Johnson just kept working, working, backing in, backing in. Dame's trying to stay with him, but man, he's he's a load to handle and uh, just couldn't keep it doing. And now Wheeling has a chance to go up by three, and they do. Just under three minutes in this one. Notre Dame needs points on this trip. Don't necessarily need a three. It may be a little too early to start worrying about that but you definitely cannot walk away with any empty possessions here in this overtime period. Nice finger roll, audio driving right down the lane with the finger roll, flips it over the rim. Big shot. Now here comes Wheeling. Driving down, spin move, Ely cut off, out high. Here is a three on the way, no good for T. Harris Jr. Rebound put back up and in by S.J. Hutchinson. <laughs> Back and forth we go. Here's Notre Dame's turn. Again, three-point lead. Notre Dame trailing in this one. Neither team wants to come away with an empty possession. You gotta score points every time you have the ball on offense to keep your season alive. Bounce pass out high. Shot clock down to eight seconds. Gotta do something with it. It's audio. On the right side, driving in, floating it underneath, shot is up, shot is good for Andre Harris. One point ball game in overtime. 90 seconds left. 
You can just feel the, the crowd is on the edge of the seat. Right side, they float it underneath. Here's trouble for Notre Dame. Johnson drives in, baseline. Just not much you can do with him. Harris needed a little help. The problem is you roll somebody underneath and that leaves somebody open out high. Yeah, he, he got possession way too close to the basket right there. No match for uh, no match for Harris. On the left side, it's Talbert with the basketball. Gives it off to Audio. Left side. Thought about a three. It's not there. Harris drives in. Shot is up. Blocking foul is called. And on the floor is S.J. Hutchinson. He is called for the foul. That's number four on him. So right now, Alex Smith, S.J. Hutchinson, Marcus Johnson with four fouls each for Wheeling. Joshua Dames, the only one in foul trouble on the court right now for Notre Dame. So inside the arc is what gets the call. Free throw up, left it short off the front of the rim. Andre Harris on the night. Eight out of 16 at the free throw line. This is a big one. Keeps it at a two point lead. Free throw up, missed them both. Rebound comes down to Wheeling and Alex Smith is fouled. I think that's gonna go against Andre Harris. That's number four on Harris. And we're going to the other end to shoot free throws. We are down under a minute. So foul is called on Andre Harris. Where's number four on that Notre Dame jersey? That's his fourth foul. And Javante Jones looked like he was getting ready to check in for Notre Dame, but not. Alex Smith, the redshirt freshman at the line to our right. He is a 70% free throw shooter on the year. He is 0 of 1 from there tonight. He makes one of these, it's a two possession game, and he does not, it rims in and out. At least not on the first one, he's got another opportunity here in overtime. Wheeling and Notre Dame. First shot, second shot rather, up good. Now it is a two. Possession game, Wheeling wants to take a timeout. So for Notre Dame, you've got 48 seconds. We'll round up. You're down two possessions. What's the strategy going coming out of this timeout? Yeah, they, they want to get a play that's a quick executing play. They want to get a good shot. It's preferably maybe something driving to the basket, draw a foul, stop the clock, regardless. They want to get a quick, good shot and then play it from there. You know, if they if they make it right into their press, if they miss it, they're going to look to foul. Yeah, because, and you know, to your point, you want something as quick as you can, drive to the basket, you lay it in, then you're down by two, and then all you really, at that point, you, you probably are going to have to foul. You can maybe wait the clock out just a little bit and hope that Wheeling misses the shot. You've still got a one-possession game. What you cannot have happen if you're Notre Dame right now is you cannot come away without points on this trip. Now here's Audio. He'll fire top of the key three. It won't go. Rebound pulled down by Notre Dame. They bring it out. Williams for a three. He got it. Trent Williams from the right wing with a three point shot. Great ball movement by Notre Dame. First of all, the rebound right there, critical on the part of Joshua Dames. He gets it out, Trent Williams, all day long to think about it and knocks it down, nothing but net. So 35 seconds to go. If you're Notre Dame, if you don't give up a three-point shot, even if they make a basket, you still will have time in a one-possession game. Yeah, it's interesting right here to see what Notre Dame will do Will they, will they play defense for the full 30, or will they foul early knowing that the best Wheeling can do is a three-point advantage? They still have a chance. Well, I'm not sure how they're going to play this here. It, it, it's it's going to, you know, you could do it either way. 
Uh, let's check it out and see. You know, they could also force Wheeling into a turnover. You never know. Right. Do you play the odds here, though? And looking at the free throws, and it's not a major discrepancy, but Alex Smith for Wheeling, one out of three from the line. Do you try to make sure, and I know he's going to be the inbounder, but do you try to make sure that somehow the ball gets into his hands and play the odds that he might miss at least one free throw? That could possibly happen. Coach Richmond, I'm sure, knows exactly who to foul, and they'll talk about it again right here. So Wheeling jumps on the timeout. Alex Smith looking to bring it in. They're not putting anybody on the inbounder. They are doubling up out on the court. So, you know, just kind of a uh, what's going to happen very exciting game here tonight. Again, our second overtime game of the day involving Notre Dame College. The women's team went to overtime against Glenville, came away with the win. Now the men's team trying to do the same thing against the Wheeling Cardinals. Of course, the winner of this one, and, you know, you got to think about it. You're going into an overtime game. You're going to have a little practice tomorrow. Hopefully your legs will be hanging out this time of the year because you got the University of Charleston coming up on Friday evening at 6 o'clock. Yeah, I think if you're Coach Richmond, you're probably telling your guys, do not foul Johnson right. and, and do not foul Ely. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else is an open game. So inbounds play. Right there. Comes in, and yep. they get it into the hands of Hutchinson. Hutchinson, 0 out of 3 from 3-point range, 6 out of 7 at the line. But again, 33 seconds on the clock. Even if he makes both of those, it's still just a one-possession game, and that's critical yeah and, and Hutchinson's been great all night but he's only a 62 percent uh, free throw shooter for the year and so uh, you know I think that's probably what the guys were told hey nobody don't foul Johnson don't foul Neely anybody else you can grab so Joshua Dames who just hit a couple of shots here late just picked up his fifth foul and he checks out of the ball game so Ogum Back in, first free throw up, back of the iron, no good. So at best for Wheeling, they've got a two-point lead, and Notre Dame will have an opportunity to tie it up or take the lead on a three. Second free throw, missed them both. Notre Dame with the rebound. Here we go, playing down to the final seconds of this overtime game, Notre Dame. Has it, driving, Harris floats up the shot, it won't go, rebound, tip back up and in by Ogham. Notre Dame has the lead with 17 seconds to go. Wheeling with a chance to win it. Ely has it, drives the lane, shot is up, it's stripped away. Notre Dame takes it away. Audio has it and he is gonna be fouled. Alex Smith gets the foul. Big shot there as Ely juked. Tried to drive in, brought the ball low. Audio comes in, strips it away, comes down the near sideline. Notre Dame with a one point lead. Alex Smith just fouls out of the game for Wheeling and at the line. Bolahan Audio out of Cleveland, Ohio, a 61% free throw shooter. He has not been to the line tonight. These two are huge with 4.8 left. First free throw, up, back of the iron, no good. Frustrated as he walks away. There's still I, a lot of time, 4.8 seconds. Ely can definitely get coast to coast in that amount of time. Second free throw, got it, it's a two point game. 100 to 98, Marcus Johnson working with it. Down the sideline, three for the win, he missed it! And the Notre Dame Falcons for the second time today, go to overtime and get the win as Notre Dame advances the eight seed over the nine seed to take on number one, the University of Charleston. Stellar play by the Falcons of Notre Dame in that overtime period. They didn't lose their composure even when they got down by three points and they did what they needed to do to get the win. Yeah, great game and a tremendous play by Audio at the end there. Came up with the steal when it mattered most and uh, Notre Dame pulls it out. Did, and again, a lot of credit. Andre Harris came in, missed that last shot, but then the putback was good. Rolled around for a little while, but it dropped in and that 
advance the lead. And to, uh, you know, here it is as they drive in. The shot was no good, but it was tipped back up and in by Ogham, who had just checked back into the game maybe 20 seconds earlier. Right place, right time. That was the winning shot. All right, we're going to step away for just a minute. We will be back with the postgame show. The 2024 Mountain East Conference Men's Basketball Tournament will continue coming up on the Mountain East Digital Network. West Virginia's largest restoration company is now in the heart of the Mountain State. With a location in Charleston, joining our branches in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, we'll be there to help when you need it most. Our expert team and state-of-the-art equipment is ready to serve the Kanawha Valley 24 hours a day. From water damage to fire restoration, when disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Mountaineers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. and Bordas, fighting for justice. We started the 2024 Mountain East Conference Basketball Tournament with an overtime game featuring Notre Dame College. We end the first day with an overtime game featuring Notre Dame College, and the Falcons get the win. EJ, what a phenomenal basketball game. These two teams battled back and forth. Double-digit lead changes, double-digit ties, and uh, look, Wheeling has nothing to hang their head about. They played as hard as any team could play. They really did, and it was a it was a high level basketball game. You look at the stats, and Notre Dame shoots fifty four percent for the game, and Wheeling forty eight, and it went back and forth, lots of lead changes and ties, and Notre Dame just made one more play at the end. Three point shooting, thirty seven percent for Wheeling, forty six percent for Notre Dame, fifty one percent for the Falcons from the free throw line, seventy seven percent for Wheeling. Uh, Wheeling out-rebounded Notre Dame 42-37. to Nine turnovers for the Cardinals, just eight turnovers for Notre Dame. Quickly, let's look at the individual scoring. First of all, for Wheeling, two players with 24 points, Marcus Johnson and Sean Ely. 13 points for Alex Smith, 12 for T. Harris. S.J. Hutchinson with 10. Six points for William Gabbert. Jerry Saunders, Jr. with five. Kobe Tigney and Kevin Coleman Jr. with two apiece. For Notre Dame, led in scoring by Andre Harris, 30 points for Andre Harris, 20 points for Bolahan Audio, 16 points for Devin Hayes, 16 points for Joshua Dames, nine points for Trent Williams, four points for RJ Ogham, including the game winner in overtime. Jamar Talbert with three, two points for Javante Jones. Time now to name our health plan player of the game. And when you look at the numbers, I mean, I think it's got to be pretty obvious. Andre Harris of Notre Dame, 30 points and eight rebounds. Just a phenomenal performance by him. Yeah, he was awesome. Gave up a lot of size to Johnson, but just kept going. Kept going to the basket, went to the line an awful lot tonight. Didn't make a high percentage that he wants to. But uh, what a great job. Well, and you know, another thing, and our producer Brian just pointed this out, it is a good stat to look at. Andre Harris, 30 points, but he drew 11 fouls. Yeah. He caused 11 fouls. So pretty impressive on the night. So, uh, EJ, I think uh, we've had a good time. You and I, you're back tomorrow during the day. You and I will get back together again tomorrow night at 6 o'clock for Notre Dame and Fairmont uh, women's basketball. Yeah, it should be a good one as well. You know, Notre Dame, 
wins both overtime games, you know, and good for them. You know, yeah. they've had so many, so much bad news about the school closing, and their teams get to play another day. So good for Notre Dame College. It is going to be a great time. Our coverage continues, gets underway tomorrow at noon. West Virginia State and Notre Dame at uh, 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. It's Frostburg State and Concord. 6 o'clock tomorrow night, Fairmont State and West Virginia Wesleyan. And 8.30 tomorrow night, Charleston and Wheeling. So that is going to wrap it up from West Banco Arena. The final score in overtime. Notre Dame 100, Wheeling 98. The 2024 Mountain East Conference Basketball Championships presented by the Health Plan. A presentation of Metro News, the voice of West Virginia, and the Mountain East Digital Network.